after removing the quarter panel, it had the surface rust on this inner structure. I uh, used a small sandblaster, sandblasted it. And then I went over with a DA, smoothed it up, and then I uh, used a, uh, a PPG epoxy primer on it. These are called what? The outer wheel wells here. These were replaced back in 82. So basically it's an NOS piece. It was a Ford service part. The quarter fits right up to it real nice. No gaps or nothing like that. And then I also repaired the lower drop off right through here that was rusted out. Yeah, the drain hose on all the cars, it has a rubber grommet that allows for drainage. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna install new quarters. One of the most difficult jobs in a restoration especially when those quarters are fastback quarters. They rise real high in the body. Screw it on, clamp it, and we're gonna start welding it on. Okay, before I put the quarter on, right through this area here, I'm gonna put a panel adhesive. It's actually what they use on new cars. Most new cars anymore are glued together. What's nice about modern technology is we can use it on the old cars and what I'm going to do is put a bead right through here and I'll be, instead of welding it, you can, you'll have one continuous adhesion all the way through there instead of having a few spot welds. And then on these little pads here, these pads actually touch the inside of the quarter. So you can put a little glue on these and then that it gives you sound deadening. It keeps from any kind of rattles or movement. Same way with these little pads here and here. These actually touch the top inside of the quarter panel. This is a self-mixing tip that goes all through there and mixes the glue together. This has actually got a 24-hour cure time on it. Got a nine-hour setup time on it. So that's what's nice. When you're trying to fit a panel, you have nine hours that you can move it around before it'll start setting up. And you don't have to do this, but it does help sound deadening movements. It cushions the panel. When you tap it or you touch it, it has a good solid feel to it. The modern cars have such thin sheet metal, they try to rigid the panel in any way they can because it's such thin sheet metal. You have thick sheet metal here, you're just making it better and better. All right, now we'll install the quarter. These uh, quarter panels come with a uh, silver paint. What it is, it's a uh, weld through primer. And you can actually weld right onto it, or weld through it. It does work a little better if you grind it. And on the spot welder, you have to have it perfectly clean. Unlike the MIG welder, you can weld through this primer. Inside of it, I scuffed it and sprayed it with a red oxide primer to give it a factory appearance. You never see it, but that's part of the detailing of the concourse. This is the stuff you don't see, you take in the note. getting these in position is the hardest part on these fastbacks. There's so many curves. And you can see how high the fastback quarter panel is extending to the top of the roof. Okay, on the fitting process, I've already fitted real close. I've drilled holes. I use a self-tapping screw, and that gives you an alignment. If you take it on and off, you can just put that screw back in a place, and that puts that panel right back where you want it. And we move, you can move them ever so slightly up, up here at the body line. You move that panel just a little bit to get it in position. Get a nice gap. Like right here, you, it, it actually is in step just a little bit. And I actually moved it out from here. And I already put a screw in it. And I'll put the screw in it. And I exceed it. It's flush and nice. And then once I weld it on, it'll be there permanent. 
Those screws don't stay, they're just for alignment? Yeah, they're just for alignment. Once I get it welded in place, I'll take the screws out and then weld the holes up. This is a quick, easy way you can move stuff, put a screw in it, because every time you take this thing off, it will move ever so slightly. So you put a screw, it's better than a clamp. What did you clamp there? That's the lower quarter. This right here I kind of leave loose and I'll put a screw in it. And then you want to pre-fit the uh, lance panel. Make sure the lance panel has a good gap on both sides or whether you can even have a gap. If not, you'll have to bend this piece a little in and out. That way that lance panel fits nice with the quarter panel. And then clamp the very bottom here. And I will spot weld this across here so it gives a factory look. I'll have to grind this clean. On the spot welder, you have to have it perfectly clean. Unlike the MIG welder, you can weld through this primer. So I'll grind this clean and spot weld it. Same way with the wheel opening area here. I'll clamp it as I um, spot weld it. And then in the corners here will be MIG welded. Factory did that. And one thing on this particular quarter panel, it is made a little different than factory. They have the flare coming all the way down to the corner. So if you see right here, the corner actually sticks out past the rocker panel. And that's part of the uh, flare. So to give it a better factory look, once that's welded in, you take a hammer and work that and flatten that back out just so, the, so that it's flush in the corner. And that'll give you a better factory look. I'll show as I'm going along, I'll hammer that in before I weld it. And now I've got the gap just right. Body lines just right. And usually, as before we took the quarters off, I noted that this actually was, the quarter panel's way lower. So I got this fit and flush on this quarter panel. When from the factory, it was probably about a quarter of an inch off, right up here. And the body lines both fit very nice. The curve fits very nice. One thing that it don't fit is the door has a curve, slight curve right here. The quarter panel does not. So you can take a hammer and just kind of blend that curve in once you start getting it welded in. As you can see, this has a dramatic curve right up. So I'll just take that hammer and blend that in. Same way right here. Now the curve up here, the curve through here, it's all right on the money. The gap fits nice. These quarter panels are very nice fitting. Also, once you glue that, anywhere you glue, you wanna, you got hours to actually move that around, but you wanna clamp it and let it set for cure time. And that fits, I'd already hammered and moved that around where it fits real nice in there. And you just leave that clamp there until tomorrow. And then that glue will be dry and it ain't ever coming off. It actually holds better than the weld. Doing that right there, I ground the original quarter off. I didn't drill these welds, because you can see these welds are very close to the edge. Right here, here, and here. When you drill those welds, you pretty much destroy that drip rail. So if you grind it off and, and go back and re-glue it, then you manage to save that and not have to destroy it. So these are factory welds? Yeah, right here's the factory welds. Right there's one that I marked with a marker. Instead of drilling them, making this thing look like Swiss cheese, I just cut with the muffler cutter and then ground off the metal from the inside. And then I didn't have to destroy that piece right there. And it still has those factory spot welds in it. Oh boy, did you get that? Save the original look in that metal. Looks like day one. Nobody will be the wiser as far as it being glued on. And it'll be just as strong, if not stronger, than originally. Okay, next where I bent this up here, push it down, tack kind of each one, and then go back and hammer it, tack it until all that fits real nice and flush. Just did a stitch weld right here. I actually cut that stitch weld out. They didn't have any spot welds. 
So I'll just stitch weld that and I'll spot weld these. And as I'm spot welding it, I'll use the hammer, push that down, tack it. And then once you hammer it and weld it, it ain't moving. And then right here, you have to bend all this out. Cause this panel actually overlaps the quarter. So drill the welds, all that good stuff. So now start bending this back into place. One thing it didn't fit is this quarter panel I marked it. That black is a mark, not a cut. And you can see that it extends past this filler panel. Uh, probably about 3 sixteenths. So I'll actually have to do a pie slice. Slice that and then slice a pie. And then move the, the back of this panel up and then weld it solid. And we'll be doing that as I'm welding as well. And that'll make that fit. So finish clamping. Start welding. I'll put all my screws back into place, all my clamps where they need to go, and then I'll start. So what's nice about putting screws here and there is you instantly put your panel back where it was, and you know it's in place. You know it's all everything's fitting instead of just trying to put it there and clamp it. Because every time you clamp it, it will ever so slightly move here and there. You can tap all the metal. One of the hardest parts is the seam right here. Getting that clamped together. You have to have a special clamp to get to that. That's welded right there? It's welded on the inside. Finding something to reach up in there, you have to have a big clamp like that. And this will reach way up in there. I usually leave the hinges on because I will apply the trunk lid periodically to make sure the gaps and everything are right. This fits way up in there. It'll get. Now are you gonna weld in there? Well, it actually brazes in the corners and it spot welds and you gotta crawl up in there and not easy getting in there. So here's the MIG welder and here's the spot welder. You're gonna spot weld where the factory spot welded and MIG, MIG weld where they MIG welded, right? Yeah, exactly, where they stitched it. Of course, there are some spots that you have to MIG weld regardless, like where I removed the piece that was welded to this trunk jam area. I had to drill it out, so I'll go back and plug weld it through here and then I will spot weld it as well. I'll grind these smooth and then go back and take the spot welder and put a few spot welds in there. That way it gives it a factory look. Up here, this will all be have filler in it. So I'll MIG weld this and you have to drill it anyways so you have the holes from the roof. So I'll MIG weld that and then go back and you'll have the filler covers it so you don't have to worry about authenticity of spot welds. What were those holes for? That's where I actually drilled the spot welds to remove the quarter panel. First, I'll be um, using the MIG welder, and I'll, like right here, I need to push this in. And they MIG welded it right here in the corner, and they did that from the factory. They kind of welded all three of those pieces together, and I'll have to push this in. And now, push this in, I'll tack it, and I'll actually hammer this flare where they kind of have it flared a little wrong. Hammer that in and work that and finish welding that. That'll be the first spot that I'm gonna do right off the bat. I just did a small tack. And I'm gonna hammer this corner. Absolutely flush with the rocker panel. You actually need probably do a small uh, pie slice cut and move that in a little bit because it's it's stamped in there. And you can see that the corner still flared out from the flare. Now it's flush. And it has a little bit of a buckle, so I'm going to cut it up a little higher. Higher. Get that buckle out. <laughs>
flush. It's got a nice weld right there. Yeah, it's all flute, just like factory. And then this gap through here is actually seam sealed up, just like factory. What do you mean seam sealed? They used a seam sealer and cocked it off. Okay, to so you won't, you, won't, you won't see that. Tonight. You'll see a slight line there, but it'll be it won't be as deep. It'll be full of seam sealer. You you want to see the line, the gap, but it's not as deep, and you can't and it keeps the moisture and stuff out of it. I mean, most people have just left that little flare out, and it, there's nothing wrong with leaving that little flare out, but doing a concourse restoration on a Shelby, you want it just like factory. You want this panel to appear like it's never been removed. That's why we're using spot welds. That's why we're doing the little details like that, where that little flare piece, where they stamped this flare in, and they went down a little too far. Now it looks like day one. And like I did the pie slice here, we'll have to do this right here. You can see how it overlaps. Well, the quarter panel sticks out past oh. the filler panel. Uh, you're looking at probably about right at 3 16 of an inch. So you're gonna cut off some metal. Yeah, I'll cut right to this edge, and then I'll cut right through here. I'll take out uh, right at that 3 16 pie slice out, and then move that in and, and weld it solid. Okay. And then that'll have a nice, perfect gap right through there. Whatever, personally, you don't want to weld up one section of the car. Like, you don't want to start just welding up a wheel opening. I kind of jump around. I'll weld back there. I'll weld up here. And I'll just kind of jump around until I get the quarter stable where it's not going to move. And then you can start welding up, like, a whole area. I'm ready. down flush now I'm gonna go back and weld all the plug weld solid What is that wheel? This is a, actually a, a weld grinder, and it's kind of like a cutoff wheel, but it's thicker. And it works really good for when you're gonna grind like a big area, and it's, it's thin enough, you can get in tight areas, and then you can go back with a regular angle grinder. It's kind of an old, old way. A lot of people even know these exist. Uh, 3M product, number 1991. <laughs> How's it looking? That's the first stage of it. It kind of knocks down the, the big areas. And I'll go back with a regular angle grinders. Oh, this is 50 grit. Uh... Yeah, it's kind of more of a cleaning up. <laughs> wow. That's pretty much finished. All this will be full of filler, just like before it was full of lead. Yeah, right. I use that uh, metal to metal filler in that area, which is like a ground up aluminum with a fiberglass around You won't see none of this, any of that seam. It'll be perfectly smooth, just like factory was. But instead of doing the, the lead, because it's not only toxic and you gotta have special skills to put that in, it's, it's kind of a, a pain getting that stuff to stick. And the lead has the acids in it and stuff that can cause corrosion under it when you go in there and actually use the metal to metal and it lasts forever and everybody was big on lead for so many years and now they but they've got something better oh well, there's always something better it looks like silver paint and it's a fiberglass resin so it's kind of like a, a metal fiberglass in a way okay, next i'm going to make weld the rest of my area right here where i removed the uh i, I used the original tail panel, this filler panel right here, if it goes to the tail panel, I, I, I used the original piece, and so I drilled the spot welds off of the piece that came with the quarter panel, 
Same way with this filler panel in here. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna weld up those weld, these plug welds through here and the plug welds through here. Now right here, you actually see this area with the end cap on. I can grab an end cap, but I'm gonna spot weld this. This area here you don't see, and this is how that end cap is. It fits the contours just right. And you want to pre-fit everything. Pre-fit your end caps, your deck lid, as you're welding and moving. Make sure all your gaps are coming out right. If you got to adjust a corner or adjust something, you can. it's easier to do it now before you weld it on. Just a bit higher. Tap that down a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Do you fit now? Yeah. That's right, flush just with it. Wow. And the thing about this being fiberglass part is you can add to it, add fiberglass to it. You can make it, make them fit a lot easier than the, than the uh, pop metal ones. Uh, I've tacked it so the uh, I could remove the screw because the screw was interfering with me lining this up like I wanted it. And all of this area that I'm, I've actually sprayed a, you can see the overspray kind of right there, but on all the metal I've sprayed a uh, weld through primer. That way in between the steel it has protected now when originally it was just metal on metal and it would get light surface rust in between the metal. This will keep it from doing that. All the plug welds and then the seam coming down from the corner you want to weld that up as well solid this corner here actually had brass in it originally so i'm going to leave that for now and then i'll go back and we'll take the braze rod and i'll brass this corner just they don't have to be done but it's just kind of an added detail you'll never have the paint back off again but it'll have more authentic look to it And one goes on top, one goes on bottom, like this. So you got to clamp it. I got to clamp it, and I got to clean the bottom side of it. And I'll be ready. Oh, there, hose. The thing about these using a spot welder is it's got to be perfectly clean. Let that thing make contact. And this still has a little bit of primer. This is a 50 grip. I gotta clean any primer on the bottom side of this uh, pinch weld. If they don't have perfect contact, it won't, it won't function. Most 
stops are just gonna plug weld this with a MIG welder. But what's the purpose of using a spot welder? Concourse more than anything. Just originality, just making it concourse as possible. Well, this you'll never see. You can MIG weld this, it'd be fine. You'll never see it. But it's actually, the spot welder works really good. You don't have to grind. So you don't have to spend time grinding and cleaning them down. Once it's spot welded, you're done. So it's a little quicker. You're gonna have all that slag and you gotta clean it up. Uh, the uh, angle grinder isn't cleaning it good enough. I'm using a strip wheel. I call them whiz wheels. That'll clean the surface better. Yeah, so the 50 grit. It's uneven in there. The 50 grit works better for even surfaces. It's so pumpy and bumpy because the old original spot welds, this'll clean out it way better. Okay. Now clamp it. The same here. Yeah, try to get that as close as possible. It's a hard spot to get to. On these fastbacks, it's so tight up in there, you can't get up in there. And then the quarter panel has like maybe a quarter of an inch of metal, so it's hard to clamp it from the bottom. You don't need a welding hammock or anything like that. It's good just to have some safety glass that kind of sparks off. That's all. That's one. You can do it on both sides. I'm gonna put one every, about every half inch. On this particular welder, you can do two at once. You can actually do it like this. And it'll weld, but I like on something where you're welding, this actually has some three pieces together. You can go on both sides and get a real good penetration weld. Yeah, you wouldn't want that MIG welder. That looks so nice there. Yeah, way cleaner than a MIG welder. Way cleaner, huh? You'd have slag and everything there, huh? Even with the slag that's left on these, they left that from the factory. You can see where this factory weld is here. It's got slag kind of around it. Where? Right here. It's this, got a slight yeah, rust to it. They just painted over that originally. Kind of a factory Detroit steel look. They're kind of blue, got a blue tint on Yeah, the heat. All right, I'm gonna start welding the uh, door jam area with the spot welder. Just hammering in this limp as close as I kind of weld it. It sticks together. It closes in the gap to where it's just a lot tighter together. Makes a better weld and looks better. It clicks like that and you get good enough contact. That's why you gotta have it really clean. Now 
it's got those real, that actually worked out really nice. It's got some nice looking spot welds. Now, does that get painted over? Yeah, that would be painted but right over them welds. You can still see the welds, right? Yeah, you'll still see that little dimple. And that's what, what you want. Now, uh, a lot of people will MIG weld this, and then they'll go back with a punch. We'll get a punch like this, and uh, this bigger one is about the same size as that. And they'll put that, they'll MIG weld it, and then they'll go back and they'll take that and they'll hammer it, bam, and put a, a dimple in that, and that's how you can counterfeit a spot weld. But that's not counterfeited there, that's a real spot weld. Okay, next we'll do the wheel tub. That will come in here. I'm just cleaning the surface. I do the spot welds. The cleaner the better. Now I'm going to clamp each weld. Okay, to determine where each weld goes, you pretty much put them where you want. So these spot welds hold the fender to the outer wheel well housing. Yeah quarter to the outer wheel housing. There's a little notch on the outer wheel housing that you can fill. And that's actually where the screws go if you had a wheel opening molding. So what I do is I fill for those and I go around them. It don't matter if you actually weld on them, but it ain't gonna do no good if you put a weld there. One thing I like to do after I do a few is take a screwdriver or a scraper and actually try to pry it apart. Make sure you're getting a good weld. Try to get behind it and make sure it's actually welding really good. But these welds are really nice. And I'm running this on about a, well, it's about a five. Seems like it's working really good on heat range. The trimmer. Another good way to check on penetration is you can get on the over the mirror a light on the back side and make sure it has a hot spot on the back side that it's burning all the way through. Then you know it's getting good penetration. You always have those clamps where you're gonna spot weld, right? So yeah, the way it squeezes it together as tight as possible. If you don't get a good squeeze with the spot welder, it can actually blow a hole through the top layer because it has a gap there. And then you gotta go back and you blow a hole, you can MIG weld it and then grind it down smooth and then touch it with this and make it look all right. Now the welds don't have to be in any kind of order. The factory didn't really space it like a robot does today, they're spaced perfectly. Back then, they just kind of hit them everywhere. They could, you could have three in a cluster and then skip two inches and then have one. I kind of try to space them every inch. At the back of the car, we're gonna finish welding up this corner, modify this corner where it don't fit just right. I'm gonna grind down these welds on the inside of this lip and then I'm gonna go in there and spot weld that with the spot welder. That way we have the correct welds grind down this through here and I'm going to go back and spot weld that 
Then I'm going to get the uh, rear vlance and we're going to, I'm going to hold it up and check this gap right here where the vlance fits up. And if that fits all okay, then I'll go ahead and finish up welding this corner here. Then I want to get some brass and I'm going to go and braze up the corners where the factory used brass in about five to six places. And then that'll be pretty much finished product. In other words, these are not spot wells down here, so you have to do more work. Yeah, these right here I'm going to grind down. You can leave them like you want. They're actually covered up, but I'm going to go ahead and just put a spot weld. That way it has a factory look. Uh, these are actually plug welds as well, oh. and I will grind these down, and it needs some welds in this blank area here. So I'm going to go ahead and put hit it all the way through with, a, with the spot welder so it looks correct. But this is a seam area. Were you going to spot weld those? Yeah, I'll spot weld them on top of these welds just to give the look. And I'm going to grind these welds down smooth and flush. But this is where I had to drill to get this inner panel off of the new quarter. Just like on this side here, this side is finished. And you can see, yeah, I put the spot welds through there and then you can see where the plug welds were and I ground them down and what I'll do is I'll take a little body filler and where it has some of the little pitting areas and just fill in those where they're nice and smooth sand them out and then you'll only see the spot welds and it'll look like it's never been replaced okay so first I'm gonna weld grinder and my safety face gap there you don't want it too overlapping and you don't want it too wide you just want a nice eighth inch gap about like that and it kind of pulls out a little bit it's actually hitting right there and I go back to the grinder and I trim that just a little bit and that'll bring this bottom edge in about right like that now that, that's a really good fitting right there this is an original blanche as well Take this back off now. And that's one of the things you put quarters on. Pre-fit everything. Doors, trunk lid, lance panels. Put a screw right here. Hold this in place and then we'll finish welding out this bottom corner. Now I'm gonna clamp the corner. We'll put spot welds. This in here will have to be MIG weld put spot welds through here. That corner will be done and then we'll start up at the top corner and then that'll be about it. We'll have to MIG weld the inside. Attention to detail is attention to how the pattern did it.
Now, how do you finish those off? You can lightly grind them. Um, the holes where the I drilled, I have to go back with the MIG welder and fill in those. And then some of the slag you can take out uh, the angle grinder. A nice smoother factory look, and I'll take the mid welder. And now for something really difficult make that cut, and here's what you have. This is part of the filler panel where it was originally spot welded. I'm gonna go back now and I'm gonna weld all this up and then we'll go and I'll fill in this gap here and fill up in here like factory. And then that'll be about it on this corner. <laughs> Start welding up these plug welds where I drilled it. Big welding with a wire feed. Off the original panel. Oh. And start cleaning it up, look, get it look better. They had brass in here. It was all spot welded. The time you cut all that out, get the brass. It kind of makes it pretty jagging it up. Well, that'll grind down and that'll actually go back with brass because they use brass to fill in these corners. brass rod. Yeah, it's a smaller brazen rod with a flux on it. A big hole in there to fill. You'll have holes in corners sometimes. You have to fill them with something. I can actually do this easier with the MIG welder, but the brass is what they used originally, so it's just kind of almost traditional just to go back with the brass. The secret is getting the heat right where you don't warp your metal or anything. So, it's gonna be brazen exactly where the factory braze. This is also a good way to fix rust. If you have a floor pan that's rusted, but not that bad, you can fill in the tip and the little pin holes with brass. Instead of having to cut it out, you can blast it and go in there and use this. Filled in those two body line gaps. And then on the back, now I'll grind that down. That'll be our finished product. Thank <laughs> you.
Seam sealed, use a body filler, so on and so forth. You can use some body filler and smooth up the pits and the little imperfections. Seam seal it, it'll look great. This gap here in the middle is full of seam sealer, so all that'll be seam sealed full. All this in here is full of seam sealer all the way around this edge. You can see that the ground down looks just like it did originally with the spot welds and then the brass like right here this gap here originally that was full of seam sealer right here you can see this has still a little bit of the factory seam sealer you can see factory seam sealer through here mm -hmm. where they go up against the uh, seam and actually seal it off to keep water from getting behind the metal so you leave that clamp on for a while then yeah i'll take that off tomorrow after about 24 hours of cure time on the glue so that's it, huh? That's it, that's full quarter panel install.